Evan Carmichael is in town. If you don't know who he is, he has a pretty sizable channel about entrepreneurship and business. And my wife and I are going to have dinner with him and then to his local YouTube meetup that he's doing. I want to talk with you guys all about why meetups are important. And if you've never been to one, give you a glimpse of what to expect. Maybe some ideas of how to pull one off yourself, as well as some things to expect if you go to one of your first meetups. Look at that, the man, the myth, the hey legend. Guys. I'll give Tim a fist bump from up here, you get that on camera, there it is. I want you guys to hear from Evan and from Nina, his wife, who is organizing all this, some ideas on how to maybe set up your own event. I think for anybody who wants to do this, start with one city just as a demo, just as yeah. a test. So we went to Boston as a test, just to see what this would feel like before committing to a 90 day tour and then being in way over your head. Right, so Boston was great, then we did the next round. For booking venues, definitely something close. We want to be somewhere around, like close to downtown, or even just 20 minutes away from the city so that people can easily um, act, able to like drive to. The insurance thing is a huge deal. I didn't even think about insurance. I have insurance for my business, but not something that would cover me into going into different locations. Yeah. So partnering up with, with my friend's company for him to manage it was a huge deal. Things to think about uh, the size of the room that you'd need. So we're booking a bigger room than we have people because we want to have space for lights and cameras and film it. So it's not super jammed in. And also with your, your um, there are exercises to do. So we need spaces for the exercise. Things to think about as well, uh, sound system. Are you gonna bring your own speaker or are you going to tap into theirs? Sometimes they include it for free, sometimes you have to pay extra for it. You need to get the marketing on before you worry about all the details, the fine tuning. Do we have all the locations now even yeah, booked? Yeah, everything it's all is, done now? Yeah, everything is booked. But people were buying tickets before we had the locations. The locations. Yeah. As soon as you come up with the idea, start telling your fans, I'm thinking about this, even before you have the dates lined up, and then take them on the journey of you starting to book it. I just booked my first place, or you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out which coffee shop I should do it at. What do you guys think? So take them on the journey, so you're, you're educating them, but you're also promoting it mm -hmm. at the same time. I have a YouTube channel as well as a newsletter list. The great thing about the newsletter list is you can target who's in different cities and different states. So, so when we went to Pittsburgh, we promoted Pittsburgh, we also promoted Buffalo, we also promoted West Virginia, and people came in from different cities because I sent them a targeted email list. When you're doing YouTube, you only have the option of your entire, it's a video, so you have to bring more value than just promotion. But when you're doing targeted campaigns like email or Facebook, we have a YouTube pre-roll ads you can run against your own audience in those cities to say, hey, I'm gonna be in Pittsburgh or Cincinnati, come on out. We used to do coffee shop meetups, yeah. but they're free. You can't pay for a coffee shop meetup. And we started having too many people coming out to a coffee shop meetup. We just try to find a spot that has a lot of seats, uh, big tables, has good reviews, that's still close. But for this one, because you're gonna charge for it, if you're gonna charge, you usually have to pay unless you have somebody local who owns a business or who owns a, a venue that you can yeah. host it in. Yeah. And that still then has to meet the other criteria of it being close to downtown, you know, parking, all that kind of stuff. I used to do, I've done free for years, like seven, eight years of doing free meetups and it always just pick coffee shops. And I think you should start there just to get the experience. The very first one I tried was in New York many years ago and six people said they were gonna come. Five people canceled on me the day before and then the last person I was supposed to meet canceled on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there in the Starbucks in Times Square and like nobody shows up and I'm looking at my emails like, hey Evan, I'm an hour and a half out of town, I can't make it. It's like zero people showed up and it's good. I think, I think if you start and it doesn't suck, then you, it took you too long. Like you should suck at the beginning. You should only have four people show up to your first one. I think that's, that's good. And then if that works, then you can think about doing something on a bigger scale. So I think you start by getting there early, try to be the first one there, try to bring people who you can uh, support, who they can support you, sorry. So I've got like my wife, I've got Danny with me. We're all setting up, but people can be welcomed as they come in. If you can control the venue, it's great to have some music playing in the background so it's not just this static kind of boring thing. Make sure everybody gets a hi, a welcome, um, be told like what you're gonna do when the event starts, when you're gonna start talking. When you start hosting the event, then 
it's on you. Like what, what is your channel about? What's your message? What do you want people to feel? What kind of activities can you put on that will also get them to know each other? Because one of the best parts of these kind of meetups is not just the connection to you, but the connection to each other. Like here, there's somebody else in my city who is into the same thing that I'm into. So for me, it's entrepreneurship. For a lot of people who come out, they're the only ones in their family who do entrepreneurship and they're watching videos and they're learning and trying to get better and their family thinks they're nuts. And so to now have somebody else local in the city that they can also now connect with is great, right? And so for, for a lot of us creators, we have these niche topics and to now know somebody else in your city who's, who's interested in the same thing is a lot of extra value. So trying to plan some kind of exercises where people get to know each other a little bit more. And then at the end, making sure you have time for Q&A, be able to connect one-on-one. -on -one. A big reason why people come out is to see you and meet you and get their personal question asked. Um, having time to take pictures or sign books or whatever you know people want to do with you. And again, put music on. This is what I forget to do at the end. If I forget tonight, remind me. Uh, put music on at the end as well as you're wrapping up. So when people are chatting or coming up to ask you questions, you'll likely get bombarded at the end with people who want to say hi or take a picture, do a selfie or do a quick video. And then it's easy to forget about everybody else in the room. So making sure you have music back on so that um, people end up with a good overall experience. Just bring the bibs. Am I allowed to eat until the bibs come? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm the messy one apparently. I'm the only one to get, oh, it gets put on me too. Wow, right. this is service. <laughs> Can't go to my event with barbecue sauce all over myself. <laughs> all right, let's post up. Bib. Here at Evan's event, he has everything set up in rows of chairs, which is a great way to do it. He's doing a lot of presenting, giving a lot of really good information, and really inspiring people, encouraging them, motivating them in their business. And so if you're doing like a presentation type of thing, great. And Evan's also getting us to move and getting us around the room and um, getting us really interacting with this content and taking action steps right there on some of the things we're talking about, which is great. If you're doing more of like a hangout type of thing, one of the things I could also work is having like great circle tables and having people be able to sit and talk with each other maybe with like a project or a game there on the table for them to do or play together uh, having some get to know you questions maybe up on a screen would be great and just giving people like not so it's all about you on the stage which just forms lines of people which can be appropriate for some places but if you want to really like bring the community together it's like tr it's finding ways of, of, of helping people connect with each other and so even though they might all love to spend the full two and a half hours of your meetup with you, that's just kind of impractical. And so how can they spend a few minutes with you, but still get a ton of value with the rest of the two and a half hours of your meetup or your time by getting to know each other? Those are the things you want to think through ahead of time before your event. So when the people come, they're like, not only did I meet my favorite creator, but I also made all these friends and now this big thing is happening, right? That's, that's the way you want to think about it. And that's when the most you know, fruitful, amazing events happen is when you're connecting people in my opinion, because as you guys know, I'm all about wanting to reach people and change their lives. All right, we are here in Cincinnati. Woo! What's up? I want some quick feedback. What did you guys learn? Something, one sentence that you learned from the event here today. What do we got on this side? Zero to two percent is your whole life. I love it. What else? What else? Just take action. You should suck at the beginning. You should suck at the beginning. I love it. Thank you guys. Continue to believe. We gotta get going. I'll take my Instagram live video and turn it into a YouTube video. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having us. What do you think about YouTube meetups? It was fun. It's, it's, it's cool to see people excited about something all in common. Like, um, I don't know, it was just fun to see people like going in there and so excited to meet Evan. For for somebody that's like had an influence in your life that you've watched their videos, and some of those people haven't even watched his videos for very long. But yeah, some people there for like they've been they've only known about Evan thing. for like less than a month or so. Yeah, and it, it came out. And it's just I think it's just awesome to be able to gather together with other people that you have stuff in common with because especially in the YouTube world, like I feel like it's starting to become more common, but there's still such a small niche of the people that you're with every day that you see every week. Like a lot of them don't understand the world of YouTube, and I think it's really cool to 
get together with people that do. One of the things I like best about what Evan was doing is that this type of meetup isn't like a, hey, let's just come hang out, see how popular I am. It's like, no, you're coming, you consume my content on YouTube for a certain value, and then you're gonna come to a meetup like this, and they're gonna give you like 10x that value. Yeah. And he did charge for this meetup to cover his expenses for travel and the hotel rental and all that kind of stuff. But then he gave him, I think, like 10x that value. Oh, like, yeah. What people? I think they paid 40 bucks to come, and that was like this. That was like a full-blown seminar that sometimes people charge normally like thousands of dollars for, and he just kind of just laid it off. So it's a great way to like serve your community even better than you maybe ever have before. I think it's freezing out here. We gotta go home. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us, guys, and click the video you see on your screen if you want to learn more about how to engage your audience on YouTube. And we'll see you guys over in the next video. Bye. Burn. It's cold.